says if I be lifted I will draw all men to myself tonight we pray that you be lifted in the midst of your people thank you because of the mighty things you will do in this place we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I welcome everyone this is our March miracle service we thank God for what he's going to be doing can you celebrate Jesus hallelujah we especially appreciate all those who have taken the time to come from various places outside of this city we honor you we love you God bless you you will never be disappointed there are many families here there are many people who have come from different places praise the Lord the Lord will surely visit you in the name of Jesus Christ the Church of God is a victorious church hallelujah please listen I just want to build on something small and then we'll pray the church of the Lord Jesus Christ the church that Jesus birthed is not some weak and beggarly religious church that just exists to keep scrounging and walking as if Jesus told us a lie how many of you believe that this Bible is real how many of you believe that this Bible is the truth? How many of you believe that Jesus died? You must believe it. The Bible says, he that comes to God must believe. Hallelujah. I thank God for a platform like Koinonia and I honor the Lord with no bias because it is a prophetic place where the demonstration of the reality of the kingdom is made manifest i will never want to represent a god who is powerless hallelujah why should i stand and tell people that jesus died and i was not there and there is no way to prove it when jesus died on the cross he said it is finished and all the powers of hell heard him hallelujah lots of people teach about jesus being victorious we write books about the victory of Jesus. We write books and, and we preach all kinds of messages about the glory of God. Hallelujah. But there are very few people who can become envoys of the demonstration of the reality of this glory. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Our God is a powerful God. Don't let your circumstances rise to a point where they diminish the power of God. 
my god is mighty that's why we sang that song he's a savior that can move mountains hallelujah jesus left us a powerful gospel jesus left us a victorious life jesus did not die to just bring some average people who are under the mercy of satan can i tell you something satan is not the opposite of jesus I've said this thing again and again because the theology that many people have been taught in church is that Satan is touch not. Don't touch him, he won't touch you. Who told you? Hallelujah. There are all kinds of cold ministries and churches who make many members sit down and wonder. They read what the Bible says here. The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall also do. He said, And greater works. We've preached all versions of what we believe to be greater works. Hallelujah. Jesus defeated Satan. He defeated hell and the grave. And he rose again. But many people say amen. But our life is not stamping that amen. Hallelujah. And there are many of us preachers that claim we are called. We even claim we are anointed. Do you know what the anointing is? The anointing is not something that throws people on the floor. If that's all the anointing does, then we in two, hurricane is also anointing. Are you getting my point now? The anointing is God's ability to do work. The same power that created the universe. Hallelujah. That's the power that can quench the voice of every evil. Listen, let me tell you something. It's so sad that even in the body of Christ today, when people are delivered, from the hand of darkness hallelujah they are criticized and people say deliverance is over are you joking the hallmark of the demonstration of the authority is the displacement of darkness by light praise the lord there are many people who go to church every sunday every monday every tuesday we sit down there and the devil is tying many destinies down and the preacher comes with his manuscript and comes to recite all kinds of poems. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. The Lord left us a church of power. He left us a church of authority. Are you getting my point? And let me tell you something. We have no right to stop people from going to herbalists and witch doctors until the church becomes a place of light where people can come genuinely. We are very quick to criticize people and say, why did you go to the herbalist? Why did you go to this and that and that? But let me tell you something. If the church cannot solve the problem of people, they will keep going to every herbalist possible. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because people are desperate for a solution. It's easy for us to sit down as men of God with our suit and ties and all the protocols around. And there are people who are, there are some of you right now. In this place, your issue is a matter of life and death. Your sickness is a terminal disease. You may just be laughing, but you know that you have, they've given you the range of time to live. There are people who have traveled risking themselves on the road. Will they just come and sit down and watch a man on suit and watch nicely dressed people? Are you joking? The church of the Lord Jesus Christ has become so powerless with men of God bragging all around. Yet there are demons and principalities there are all kinds of things tying the lives of people down. And we preach all kinds of message to explain away responsibility. 
the God that saved me is a powerful God. The God that anointed me is a powerful God. And the last time I checked my Bible, I never saw Satan arguing with God. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible tells us that he entered a city. And he, when he entered a city, it was noise. Let's go to our Bibles. Ah, my body is itching me to do something for the devil this night. Mark 1. I believe in the power of God, though. I believe in the power of God. Someone said, I don't believe in healing. I said, no problem. The day the doctors cannot help you, you will believe. Surely. Or the day your brother or sister is diagnosed with something that the doctors cannot cure, you will believe that miracles are real. There are people, even maybe some of you sitting down right now, you don't even believe that miracles are real. You are welcome. Hallelujah. It's sad that we live in a generation where men of God fake miracles. They call somebody to sit on a wheelchair and then they say stand up and he stands up. And Nigerian films have been, they have received a recent baptism from the devil to mock men of God. Hallelujah. And they act all kinds of films. And the man of God is casting the devil. And the devil will turn and slap the man of God. And then the man of God will be paralyzed. These kinds of teachings and they scorn men of God. Let me tell you something. Not everybody is fake. There are people who have met God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And all this mockery that they mock men of God and make them powerless. And you see a man praying and the demons are around. They are even dancing and rejoicing. Choking. Except where the, the Bible says the light shines in the darkness. And he says the darkness not only lives, but it cannot comprehend it. Hallelujah. Mark. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 1, 21. And let me just read a few scriptures to let us know that this kingdom is a kingdom of power. This kingdom is a kingdom of grace. It's a kingdom of strength. Don't sit helpless as though Satan cannot bow. Let me tell you something. He can bow. We have watched a lot of witchcraft activities. We have seen so many things in our families. And because of that, many people have come to believe that nothing can be done. We've stayed around a lot of unbelief. Verse 21. And they went to Capernaum and straight away on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one with authority and not as the scribes. 23. And there was in their synagogue a man who had what? An unclean spirit. And when Jesus entered, the unclean spirit cried out. 24. Saying, let us alone. I mean, Jesus shows up in a synagogue and a man is sitting quietly and the light and power that emanates from him compels those demons to say, leave us alone. This is in your Bible. Christians, this is in your Bible. He said, what have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth. You now see why he told Paul, Jesus we know. Had thou come to destroy us, I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. 25. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Verse 26. And when the unclean spirit had turned him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. 27. And they were all amazed. You know why? Because until the New Testament, they didn't cast out demons. They isolated those who had demons and stoned them at times. Are you getting my point? Because they did not have that ability. So when they saw this happen, that a man can speak, this was a demonstration of the superiority of the kingdom of our God. He said, they were amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority 
commanded he even the unclean spirits and they and they did the bible said they, they argued but the kind of church that we are marketing to believers today is the kind of church where believers argue we we argue and you tell people be healed and the devil just sits there and all kinds of people come to church year after year and after year and nothing changes in their lives. This is Jesus. I'm telling you, Jesus inspires me. Goodness. Read verse 32. Jesus inspires me. Sometimes when I begin to read the Bible, I just begin to cry. I say, what manner of man? What manner of man? 32. And when it was evening, when the sun did set, they brought to him how many? All that were diseased. They knew he was going to heal them. Pastors, do the members of our churches know we can heal them? Do they know? People just argue and say, me, I don't have the healing ministry. I, I just, my own is just to teach. We find the aspect that is easy. And we capitalize on it. Show me who had the healing ministry in the Bible. They brought unto him all that were diseased. And them that were what? Possessed with devils. What did he do? And all the city. All the city. All the city came and gathered in front of the door because they were desperate for solution. Hear me, brothers and sisters. The world is still desperate for solution. And they will do anything. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Hallelujah. 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place. Listen, because he had this ability to heal and deliver, he ran just to go and pray. And let's see what happened. 36. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. 37. And when they had found him, they said what? Unto him, all men seek for thee. Why do they seek for thee? Many preachers think members come to church because they love them. You better stop dreaming. These people love themselves and they have problems. If you cannot solve their problems, get ready to be frustrated in ministry. So if a herbalist can do what a pastor should do, your members will come to church on Sunday. Immediately after the grace, they will take their honorarium and all their empty bottles and whatever. And race down to go and meet a herbalist that they think they can seek for. And try to look for power. If peradventure, the problem can be solved. But brothers and sisters, I bring you a message tonight. There is a God that is alive. Jesus is alive. Say it one more time. Jesus is alive. Say it again. Jesus is alive. We talk so much about the glory of God. We want to see your glory. Oh God, show us your glory. And I always ask, what is the glory of God? What is the glory of God? When we say, Lord, reveal your glory in the midst of your people. When we say, bring revival. What exactly are we talking about? Gold dust? Sparks of light? When we ask him to reveal his glory, let me tell you what the revelation of the glory is. John 1. Sorry, chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 11. Let's see what the Bible says. John 2, verse 11. It's projected. Can we read together? One to read. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory. Hold on. 
How did he manifest his glory? How did he manifest his glory? By the demonstration of miracles, signs and wonders. When he did things that astonished them. The revelation of the kingdom of God. The Bible says as a result his disciples believed on him. That means when the glory is truly revealed, it makes men believe in the name of the Lord. John the Baptist was caught and he was there in prison and he got angry. And the Bible says when he heard about the things that Jesus was doing, he sent, he said they should go and ask Jesus, Are thou the Christ? In other words, are you the anointed one or should we expect another? Jesus did not answer. He said, go and tell him the things that you see and hear. The blind see, the lame walk, the deaf, their ears are open, the dead are raised. This is the manifestation of the kingdom. If your family comes today and they come and receive breakthroughs and all kinds of cancers and tumors and demonic things leave them, let me tell you something, they will believe in the name of the Lord. It's very difficult to resist the power of God when you see it in action. Hallelujah. It's very, very difficult. The Lord wants us to believe in him. While I was coming, I saw something around the market. I think I was going to PZ in the afternoon. And I saw somebody that gathered people around. People just gathered. You know, all these men that tried to do all kinds of things. No invitation. And the people gathered. And I said, this God's own version will happen this night. Hallelujah. I believe in him. He didn't leave us a weak and beggarly gospel. He left us a gospel of power that can be demonstrated here and now. Everybody say the power of God is real and can be demonstrated here and now. So I bring you a word of encouragement. Especially for those of us who have come from different places. By the grace of God, with all humility, I assure you that this is not just a place you come around to just laugh and feel good and go. Something will change in your life. Because Jesus is alive and we believe him. We believe him. A man approved of God with miracles, signs and wonders. God has approved of us with miracles and signs and wonders and tonight let me tell you we are here to put an end to the activities of wickedness hallelujah there are many of us who are seated right here especially for those of us who are just coming here someone sent me a text i think as early as two or three this morning a lady and she said she woke up and she had a very terrible dream and in a dream, another woman was molesting her. And all kinds of things. She said, and this thing has happened again and again. You go and meet an average preacher. She says, oh, you don't have faith. If you had faith, the person would not come. Are you joking? <laughs> Whereas, the preachers too are suffering their own. Demons oppressed me for many years. I was healing the sick and casting out devils. I was still being oppressed by demon spirits. My own is not like a dream. I saw it. So it's, it's not like somebody is preaching a gospel. Another gospel. I have experienced it. I know that demons don't respect title. There is only one language that commands respect in the spirit. They can call you apostle. They can call you whatever you want to be called. No matter how mad a madman is, he never enters fire by mistake. He can carry something that doesn't belong. They say, I'll leave him, he's mad. But as mad as he is, when he sees fire, he will turn back. The Bible says, he maketh his angels, spirits, and his ministers, flames. Hallelujah. No matter how mad a man is, pastor, he doesn't enter fire. Because in his madness, he knows what fire can do. 
Hallelujah. And the Bible says, how all inspiring are your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies submit themselves. I saw the devil jeopardize my family. I knew where my father came from. And I saw the activities of witchcraft and wickedness that happened. A lot of preachers preached me into believing everything was all right. But I knew that it is true that Christ died on the cross. But I knew that. See, let me tell you. Look up, please. Knowing what Jesus has done is not revelation. It is knowing what you need to do to make it a reality that is revelation. Many people have knowledge. Let me tell you, I preached somewhere, you can get the message. And I said the key to accessing the glory and demonstrating the reality of the kingdom is not knowledge, it's understanding. Understanding tells you how to make something real here and now. The day I caught a revelation and a light in my spirit, I ran home. I ran home and I stood in front of my door and I said, the demons that oppress me, I beg you, please come. This is not just some jamboree that we do in church. I knew it entered me. And let me assure you, ask the devil till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. But I never knew it was real. I prayed. I fasted. Seven days fasting. At the end of that fasting, they will come and oppress me. Let me tell you. I prayed. I fasted. Just like many of you have been fasting. But there are laws in this kingdom. Things don't just happen because you are born again. Are you listening to me? There are families that have come. Mama, let me tell you. God is going to visit you. As I'm standing here, I'm already seeing oppression. This is you being tied. Tied. This is what I'm seeing. Do you know a man can be walking physically, but spiritually he's in prison? Go and read your Bible. He said to open the doors of the prison. The people did not know they are in prison. Physically you are walking. Physically you are moving. Someone lives abroad. And just comes back to remain in the village. They say, my brother, why did you come back? He said, me too, I don't know. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Many of, you are, many of you don't know why Paul said, I am not ashamed. If you understand the gospel very well, it takes courage to preach it. Because it's not attractive. So Paul said, I am not ashamed of every aspect of the gospel that must be taught. Hallelujah. We have seen all kinds of oppressions. All kinds of things. I've shared with you in this place. A woman who came for counseling. Every time when she sleeps, she sees monkeys coming to molest her. And she had stillbirth at uh, the teaching hospital in Shika. Um, not Shika, the other one in, P in uh, PZ. You know that one there in Sabo. And she gave birth to half man, half monkey, dead, physically. How do you explain this? Look, let me tell you. Come to terms with the fact that this world is a wicked world. Are you getting me? If you get this thing, this is deliverance for you this night. Because you will stop listening to many messages that don't make sense. At once you will know that if you do not arise and stamp the devil where he belongs, he will eat you up as if Jesus did not die. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of God. I am convinced that every believer should be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. I prayed for some ladies. I think you were there, Kenny. Some ladies that came and I prayed for them. One of the ladies, she had not slept for a long time because these demons come to oppress her. She can't sleep. When I prayed for her, I casted out that devil of darkness. Here and then, it was less than 10 seconds, she started sleeping. You see what is killing some of our parents? They hold their drugs on their hands, but the sleep will not come. 
The Bible says he giveth his beloved sleep. And if the devil argues with that, you prove to him that you know what you are saying. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, God has never had cause to rise up from his throne, but there was still war in heaven for Satan to leave heaven. There had to be war to live. What do you think will make Satan just live freely in your life? If there was war to get Satan out of heaven, he said there was war in heaven. Is that not true? It was on account of that war, Satan was cast down. I write to you, my son Timothy, that ye wore a good warfare with the prophecy that has been given unto you. It didn't say carry. The warfare is not this madness we do around. The warfare is having an understanding of what your role is in making the word of God become a reality. And brothers and sisters, I bring you good news. We have fasted for today. We have prayed for today. The, all the departments and workers have prayed. We have prayed and I assure you the devil will let you go tonight if you are interested. If you, are, if you are not interested, there are other miracle service, services that are coming. But tonight, if you are tired, you can tell the devil is over. There are families that have been tied down. There are some of our fathers. They are not doing their responsibilities as men. And you think it's just like that. Nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Are you hearing me? Nothing just happens. Satan knows that Jesus has died. Satan knows that he's given the church the victory. But he also knows that we are lacking in understanding. And we must keep contending. Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight is my night of liberty. In the name of Jesus, tonight is my night of healing. It's my night of deliverance. It's my night of breakthrough. It's my night of restoration. Let me talk about marriage a little. Because we are going to confront that thing this night. There are many people, if the power of God does not step into your life, you will never marry. I don't care what you rob, foundation, the next one after it, whatever it is. Because the problem is not your physical appearance. There are powers that tie men down. The Bible says, he told, he said, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 verse 18. He said, four horns. These horns have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel against jerusalem so that no man will lift up his head say but i have sent carpenters i have sent carpenters we are going to pray let me preach to everyone here that marriage is the will of god are you hearing me marriage is what absolutely the devil knows what marriage can do if marriage did not affect Satan, he will not fight it. Are you getting my point? Sister, the devil knows why he's fighting to make sure your husband does not come. But this night, this night, the Bible says at a prophetic word, bones that never saw each other for a long time started relocating till they came. There is a husband for you. Don't let statistics deceive you. Whether it is 10 men, 10 women to one man is none of your business. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says you shall not call what they call conspiracy, conspiracy. He said when men shall say there is a casting down, what is your testimony? There is a lifting up. Many ladies are afraid now to an extent that people are just becoming desperate. They say, do you know there are no husbands? Who told you? Who told you? Who told you there are no husbands? My God will locate you in the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to address issues. It's a miracle service. It's not a healing service. Miracles are more than healing. There are many of us here, we are not sick. But our family needs divine intervention quick. Financially, 
and otherwise. There are many of us, everybody in your family is a graduate, but nobody is working. Everywhere you go, they drive you. Some of us even went abroad. You went abroad, you came back, and you are looking as if you never went to school. That devil must bow this night. Hallelujah. And for those of us who have been told by the doctors that nothing can be done about your situation, I bring you good news. There is a way out. Soon answer, yes. One day I feed you can soon I soon answer, yes. One day I feed you can soon I soon answer, yes. One day I feed you can soon I soon answer, yes. For some of us, it's academic bondage. People keep mocking you. They think you are lazy. You are reading all you can read. You are doing everything. But there are horns that have vowed that you will not arise. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are horns that, you are, that have vowed that as far as admission is concerned, you won't get it. Or as far as this is concerned, they mark scripts. When it's time to mark your own, they forget it. Come on now. Don't tell me that's a coincidence. When you know the realm of the spirit, you know things do not just happen. Hallelujah. A lecturer just looks at you and vows to punish you in that department. What did you do? I just hate you. What kind of, what kind of nonsense is that? That's a spirit speaking through that person. Hallelujah. And there are people here who have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. At least I know that I got two text messages by some people. And God opened the womb of Hannah. And he opened the womb of Rachel. God can open wombs. I don't care what they say is there. How many of you have seen a bulldozer trying to throw something down? Whatever stands it way, it clears it. Whether it's called fibroid, whether it clears it away. This is the God I serve. Hallelujah. Some of us have been given all kinds of reports. And they've said you may never be able to have a child. Even if they remove your womb, you will give birth. Hallelujah. Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. Her stomach started growing. Be it unto me. When Joseph saw her stomach growing, he said, I will divorce you. I have no business with what is happening. And the angel said, what are you saying? Keep this woman for that which is in her. How it entered the word of God. He says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Shortly, we'll rise up and pray for five minutes. And that prayer is aimed at steering anger in you to say, Lord, I'm not going to go back the same. Hallelujah. You know, many of us hear words like this, but the impetus to make it our word, that's what we lack. So you can rejoice over other people. Hallelujah. You must get angry and say, Lord, as you're visiting men this night, I'm holding on to you like the woman with the issue of blood. Let people call me unclean, no problem. That's why I'm here. Are you getting my point? You must get angry. Especially for those, there are so many people you could not get seats. You can't just be standing outside. And then at the end of it, you just go back and say, I didn't get seat. Say, Lord, as a reward for this standing, the devil must bow. Hallelujah. Jesus wants his glory to be revealed. And let me tell you something. All things are possible. Say it after me. All things are possible. The Bible says Jesus healed them all. It didn't say he healed some. It didn't say he healed the, the ones that could be resolved. 
Then the ones that have gotten so bad, he could not do anything. The Bible says he healed them all. That means he delivered them all. Hallelujah. And some of us here are standing in for our family members. You know that we care about family here. We are convinced in this place that if your family does not experience what you call salvation, your Christianity is not yet complete. He said, as for me and what? He didn't say as for me and myself. As for me and my house. It's not enough for you to receive breakthrough. When there are people in your house who have not experienced that, they must be opened to this reality of the revelation of the power of God. Isaiah 61. Arise, shine. Isaiah 61. Let's see what the Spirit of the Lord came to do. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord, the Master, the owner of the universe, has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He had sent me to do what? Bind up the brokenhearted. He had sent me to proclaim what? Liberty. That means those who have been tied by ancestral causes and yokes. And they have said, nobody will cross this boundary. You are the one who will cross it for the first time. And tell your family members the door has been opened. Everybody can now freely pass without bowing down to a dragon. Without bowing down to a deity. There are some of us, as you are sitting down right now, our parents are putting pressure on us. Come home or come to the village. Let them go and bath you with whatever. Let me tell you, Africa has not forgotten where they are coming from. They are still practicing it. It's just that we are practicing part traditional religion and then on Sunday we are doing religious Christianity. Some people cannot just rise. It's called limitation. You know what limitation is? You don't remain there. You will move up. But it's like there is a mark that has been placed over your family. Nobody rises there. You see a man rising, doing well. He can get a job. One day, he will come back. Those deities are proving to you we are alive. But tonight, somebody, Kabali Kabarosataya, somebody will walk out and for the first time you will break those barriers and say people in my house just get children without getting married because of frustration when they are 55 years and no man is coming they say okay just get pregnant at least let's have children and you will say you are the one who will break that and you will usher in your children and everybody there are those who say they have vowed that your degree will remain a piece of paper. You have gotten degree, you have gotten masters, but there is nothing around your life like that. Everywhere, a man will vow a pastor and say, bring me your CV. When you are about to visit that man, someone will come in your dream and now molest you. You get up the next day to go and the man will say, I cannot remember telling you this. Ah, yeah. There's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up men and women anointed to break every chain break every chain there are some of us you are the first person in your family to enter university or even to complete it and the devil has found he said it has never happened and all hell is breaking loose they say frustrate her frustrate him frustrate them who are these horns? Who are these horns? 
that fly above the lives of people to jeopardize their prophetic destiny. Come on, pray. Pray. Tonight is a night of judgment. Tonight is a night of justice. Shake it, 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 it. Get angry. Tonight, I will break limits where my father did not enter. I will enter by the power of the Holy Ghost. Everywhere, pray inside and outside. Begin to pray. I break limits. Satan, enough is enough. Hey! Come on, get angry inside and outside for your destiny. Hallelujah. Look up. Please listen. 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 There are some of us, what is plaguing your family is the cause of hardship. Nobody ever finds anything easy in your family. You are born again. You pray in tongues. But until you have suffered to a point where even when God wants to bless you, you don't want to receive because you are used to suffering. Everybody must walk like an elephant for everything. Some of our parents are working three jobs, five jobs, just to be able to raise 10 or 20,000 naira. It's a cost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. I beg you in the name of the Lord. Please listen to me. I beg you in the name of the Lord. I want you to get angry tonight. One of the things that we must all break, the Lord was ministering this to me, is this thing called limitation. Many of us don't know what limitation is. You know what limitation is? A mark has been drawn. And they say nobody can cross this mark. There are many families that are suffering this. For years, my father was working. The people that he was part of interviewing them to get the job became his superiors because there was a barricade. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you don't believe it, I don't know how to help you this night. Because there are many people who just say, is it, is it real? Look at your life. You have been claiming, oh, I'm free. But you are seeing trends happening in your family. Come on now. There is something to break this night. There is something to break this night. There is certainly something to break. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up. There are some of us, what must leave your family this night is the plague of death. Some after two, two years or three, three years or by September or a particular month, somebody must die or be paralyzed or be sick. Patterns of wickedness. When these limitations are broken, 
let me tell you you will find yourself finally you will see that doors will now be open and do you know what listen every time you force a door to open in the spirit you bring others into that experience listen hear this do you know there are many of us here our parents have gone for meetings to try to break some of this thing it's just that where they went they did not sustain the kind of anointing and spiritual intelligence it takes to break so our parents tried and it didn't work and God said you you are the one that has been chosen go go for the family go for the family many of our family members have gone to all kinds of prophets they have collected their money plundered them did everything nothing to show for it we hear the chains falling tonight the waters will be stirred and I tell you when the waters is stirred these powers that have put a barricade and said no man will rise maritally financially academically if you have been carrying an inherited disease don't say it's like that in our family. This night, you must begin to contend. I can't remain SS simply because everyone is like that. I can't remain AS because everybody is like that. I can't have eye problem because everybody has it. Get angry. Shake it, baba, 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 baba. Bring them, bring them, bring them in. Shira na 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 mo so na na na. Shira ba la mere bara ba shi. So para da 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 ba, de ra ma si ta na na na, she Maria da ba, she na 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 ba, she de 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 ba su da 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 da, de na na ba, de na na ba su do da 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 da. Hallelujah. The angels of the Lord are in this place. It's time for miracles. It's time for that sickness to leave your body. All those outside, please lift your hands. Just those outside. Hallelujah. There are so many angels outside. Listen, there will be such a move of power and of the spirit outside. Hallelujah. At the count of three, you will shout Jesus. That fire, devils will begin to cry and jump out. Just those outside. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power to heal, to deliver, to set free. Thank you for the confirmation of your word. Right now, in the name of Jesus, those outside. One, two, three. Shake the book of those. Reke te 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 te. So go so praise. Just those outside, the power of God is falling. I command devils, come out, come out, come out. I command powers, demon spirits. I command them now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Outside, 
the angels of God are moving everywhere outside the power of God is shaking every demonic hole acts of witchcraft yokes causes those outside lift your hands again lift your hands I just want you to focus on the screen those of you outside in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I will count three and you will shout that name Jesus again no power will hide right now one two three go 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 hey! come out come out of them devils yokes bondages by the fire Please help the ushers if they need help. Help the ushers if they need help. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. And miracles everywhere. I say right now. The power of God will move mightily inside this place right now and shake foundations. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. As you shout that name, Jesus. No instruments. At the count of three, no instruments. Just shout that name, Jesus. And the power of God will begin to deliver people inside here. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Jesus. The fire of God is coming down right now. Mightily. Shekete. Mekoto Sota. Take a priestaba, some bread, take it, take it, bring them out. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, break it, take 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 it, Ma prateko sopai empretos tipali ala baba baba Se se kete baba 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 Se protos sopre kete bala baba Hallelujah This roll lift your hands The angel of the Lord is standing in this room. I pray right now. Every activity of witchcraft. According to what the Lord is showing me. Those in this room. Right now. In the name of Jesus. I want you to shout. Jesus right now. One, two, go. Let it be shaken, oh God. Now, 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 
escape tonight outside at the top of your voice after the count of three many of you will feel fire as if it's just poured on you my god let no spirit let no spirit remain right now one two three All those that have come out Those in front here As a point of contact To those who are there By the blood I bring a separation I bring a separation By the blood now Now, 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 now. I bring a separation By the blood By the power The mystery of the blood The mystery of the blood The mystery of the blood Bring the lady. Bring the lady. Sipa kata ya bata ya bata. Reshe kete bakata bariya 
house of Ariyato. Bring her here. Roshagata. Zupatea. Atoketeka. Zego Pariyanda Shiva. Ze Gloria Taralabara. Oriyala Balarabaya. Ezoke Preketesha. Zukataba Yabata. Aroshakata, Zekota Boba, Popa Niatosa, Aroshia Katuka, Popa Le, Popa Le, Soriato, Akata Braki Pata Pata, Suatebria, 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 Hallelujah. The God that we serve is not a dead God. The God that we serve is alive. He can change your life. The God that I serve is a living God. Bring the lady. Bring her. But the light shines in the darkness. Let her go now. You know my voice. Out. Now, leave her. Out. Never return again. Now all the devils here At the count of three Your exit comes You hear my voice I speak to you from the realm of the spirit One, two, so go, go Go, go, go Out, 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 out You must go By the power of the Holy Ghost Go, 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 be free, I set you free, Shadora, let her go now. Leave this little girl out, devil of darkness. Out, come out of her now. Come out of her. Come out. 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 Marital delay. Give me a hand. With a loud shout, out you go. Now. Lay your hands on this girl. Let her go now. You are a wicked spirit. Out. I see you in the spirit. Go. Out of her. Now. Go now. Let her go now. You are a wicked spirit. Take Out. Posa. 
come out now in the name of Jesus Christ the serpent and spirit your time is over go Listen, some of you are not out here, but there are things that are already parting ways with you. Are you getting my point? I want to rebuke delay. Many of you do not know the danger of delay. If you are not experiencing any delay, no problem. But I'm just flowing as the Spirit of God. Where is your sister? Bring her. Sister, where are you? Please come and stand here. Your breakthrough has come. Marital delay, it will die now at once. Hold my hands. Look at me. Just look at me. All right, then. You will leave her never ever to return to her again by the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, I challenge you. Something will leave you right now. I'm seeing you tied in the spirit. Marital delay. Go! Never to return. Lay your hands on your stomach. They will never say you have a fibro. I cross that spirit. It's a family thing. Hold her. This is a family thing. May they be free, O oh God. Bring salvation to this family right now. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I tell you, the devil hates this prayer. Because if he can get you to experience delay, you will give up on your faith. There are many of you, there are levels you would have entered right now. Bring this lady. Yes, come with her. Just clear the way for them. Let me just touch her head. Well done, ushers. Let her be free. Let her go. Together with the delay. Zigo Palada Garanda Shia Kataga do Siza Lagataga Branda Sila Barando Jigli. Listen, lift your hands, everybody. Outside, lift your hands. I'm about to challenge the spirit of delay. Sakataya Mandeka, Sete Lamantaria. You can move forward because something is tying you down right now. In the name that is above every other name, every delay in this place, at the count of three, I command the devils be gone right now. One, two, three, go, 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 go. I cause delay. I cause delay. I cause delay. Every kind of delay. Every kind of delay. Where is the woman?
Where is the woman I spoke about? One mama that was here. How are you, madam? You, you came alone? Where are they? Come, come. Who are those that came with mommy? Bring this woman here. Sorry, just take it easy so they don't. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Where's the daughter? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. God is going to visit you. This is witchcraft. Eh? Madam, this is witchcraft. I'm not going to go into any long story, but I need to pray for you. You believe that? This is your daughter? Yes, sir. How are you, my dear? I'm going to pray for you. Hold my hands. I'm seeing you tied. Kai, this is... This is acute witchcraft. Where are you from? I'm from Edo. Edo State? Yes, sir. Hold my hands. And I always find my spirit in the village. Ah, uh -uh, now, hold on. Why are you? I want to, it's just that I didn't want to talk to you. See, let me tell you something. Huh? The Lord is ministering to me, and I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine. Are you listening to me? I'm seeing something that looks like a shrine in your village. When you sleep in the night, they call your spirit. Is that true? Yes, sir. Just if I'm lying, just yes, say I'm sir. lying. Yes, sir. When you sleep, where do you see yourself? I when find you... myself in the village. You find yourself in the village. Yes. This is what I'm seeing. They are invoking her spirit. This is what that, that witch doctor tried to do to the spirit of Saul. You see that in the Bible. These people are necromancers. You will be free tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I pray for you? He is risen from the dead. He is Lord. Light is shining. Madam, look at me. In the darkness. Can you shout? If I ask you to shout, can you shout? I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. Can you do that? Go ahead. Let her go now. Let her go now. Out. An end comes. I command breakthrough. Let this family change. Don't cry. Can I pray for you? Father, let this lady experience breakthrough. This is part of it. Eh? Is you are the one that brought her? Celebrate this lady, please. You see why it's a blessing, madam. You feel pain. At, used to feel pain at your back. Eh? You came here sick. Look at you came here sick now. Come and walk. Let me see where the sickness is now. Don't worry. Come up. Just come up. Check yourself. Check. Do what you couldn't do. Check whether the pain is there. Do what you couldn't do. Just do. I was already healed. Yeah. You were what? I was already healed. You were already healed. They have been calling me to come for this program. I couldn't come. Even when I was in the shop, my daughter said, Mommy, come. I kept a seat for you. When you enter, the Holy Spirit said, That is the man that will deliver you. I gave my life to Christ 20 years ago. But there's battle. I always complain, why am I seeing my spirit in the village? And anything we touch with my husband, there's nothing. I went to, even when you are preaching, you say some people will go to some me church to go and receive miracle. I went to, the last one I went to, I weep. I gave money, I cooked to this woman. He says it's a prophet. You cook for the prophetess? Who cook? And after I left the place, after I left the place, he just damaged my image, was just saying different things about me. And I'm not like that. And God did it for me today. I'm the king. Give Jesus praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
You are the one that brought her. Are you her daughter? No, she's my neighbor. She's your neighbor. Yes, what do you want God to do for you? I just want to get admission. That's all. Admission? Yes. Where? Into university. Have you written jam? No, not. You are writing next week. Yes. Hold my hand. My God. In the name that is above all names. We give you admission in this place now. The God who is bigger than any registrar, bigger than any senate, he will come back and stand right here and testify. You have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, no power will stop you. I use this as a point of contact to everyone who is going to be writing jam whether for you or for your loved ones i tell you the truth and i lie not see listen prophecy every power that says you will not be admitted in the name that is above all names. Receive your admission. Receive your admission. Receive your admission. Receive your admission. I provoke it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive your admission. Listen. Whether you know what you are writing or not, May my God hold your hands. That oh, hand, the Lord, Mene, 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 if I be a servant of God, may my God hold your hand. Listen, many of you do not know the power of prophecy. Prophecy is not just about speaking. It creates the scene for your breakthrough to happen. Parada shi ama krundi siza ma paradi ata zego shila. Give me her hands. She was coming to fight me. No, shila. All right, you must. Leave. No, don't put it in. Hold on. You must let her go. In the name of Jesus, the Christ. Out! You are a wicked spirit. By the power of the blood, go now. Don't waste our time here. Now. Thank you, Jesus. Be thou enthroned on high. Enthroned on high. Enthroned. Help me worship us. Be thou and Marriage. We are going to visit the issue of marriage right now. Please, I want you to listen. I'm just flowing as the Holy Ghost is giving me grace. Sister, look at me. Just look at my eyes. You must release her right now. It's time for you to go. Out you go. 
Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I set you free. Let it leave you now. Let it leave you now. Whether it's for yourself or for your loved ones, I want you to stand and agree right now. I'm about to command that spirit that causes late marriage. Please take it very serious. This is a miracle service. Don't say it doesn't concern you. And all I want you to do is just to shout amen. All the spirits that come to molest you and molest your loved ones and cause them not to get married in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that name that is above every other name In the name that is above all names i pray right now by the power of the holy ghost please get said something mighty will happen in this place now every spirit that says there will not be marriage by the sword of elohim right now as you shout jesus they will depart from you now one two go Every marital delay. Go, 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 go. Let marriage spirit us back out in the name of Jesus. I prophesy to you. May your life partner come into your life. I prophesy. I call for your life partner supernatural marriage hallelujah hallelujah a lady has been healed of chest condition outside check yourself and run out here check it looks like ulcer you just feel something leave you please check and run quickly quickly Come and let God seal your miracle. The Lord just ministered to me. Please check, check. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for the sick right now. Every infirmity bows to the name of Jesus. God has killed a lady. A lady. Is that the lady? another one come come you've been healed when god speaks to one he speaks to many look at just one prophetic word give them the mic is it working what happened to you just tell us quickly okay, i just felt a pain leave my chest. you felt something leave you yeah. do what you couldn't do before I felt pain in my chest. completely hold my hands never returns in the name of jesus christ let her go forever come what happened to you now I have been having this burning pain here. You've been having burning I pain. How long? For I've how long? Been drugs for over two weeks now. You've been on drugs. Yes. Uh -huh. the drugs is even, in, is even in my bag right now. The drugs, you go and yes. bring it. Talk to her. What happened? Please tell us. A sharp pain left me. A sharp pain right now just disappeared. Come on, are you celebrating Jesus? Look at the drugs. These are the drugs you take. In the name that is above all names hold the drugs just hold it hold it look at me lord in the name of jesus christ 
you are perfecting her. She will not need these drugs again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Check yourself. God is healing more people with this kind of pain. If it's happening to you, come out right now. Come out. God is healing people. All stars. All stars are going right now. Okay, she's been healed. God bless you. It's perfected in Jesus' name. Talk to me. I've been having this pain of chest. Please make sure you don't tell lies. For the past two years now. For the I've past been, two years now. I've been two years. This chest pain. Chest pain. Yes, sir. Anytime okay. I try to breathe, it will hold. It will when you try me. to breathe, it will hold it you. It will hook me. Uh huh. Sometimes I'll be crying, praying. My mom said that it is over. But I've been going to hospital to collect drugs. But I told my mom I couldn't, I can't take any drugs again. But I believe that God will heal me one day, one time. What happened right now? When you said that we should check. And when you prayed, I felt that I felt that something is out of me. And now I'm healed. Breathe. Do breathe in. Deep. Any pain? No, any sir. pain? No, sir. Just keep breathing. The power of God is coming on you. Lord, let that be the end of it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Perfection in the name of Jesus Christ. Come. All right. I've been having this chest pain for over two years and six months. Two years, six, six months. months. Yes. Pain. If I breathe in, it just pain. Okay, breathe in now. Breathe in right now. What happened to you right now? It's free. Complete pain. Hold my hands. Lord, it never returns to him again. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've been having this um, peptic ulcer since. Since 2006. Yes, and recently. Peptic ulcer. Yes. You are sure, confirmed. Yes. Okay. And last week, the thing started coming back again, and the pain was so severe. At times, it doesn't allow me to sleep at night. But as we we're outside and we shouted, Jesus, I felt. You felt something. Yes. That so wicked said, thing that I sat there, he must pack his load and leave this night. I felt. Hold my hand. I use this as a point of contact to every area of your body. That whatever has not been planted by my God lives your life forever. If you have problem in your eyes, God is going to heal all kinds of eye problems right now. Lay your hands there, please. I want to pray. Lay your hands. Please believe. Thank you, Jesus. when I pray for you check yourself and if you see a miracle run out here even if you see that it has started please don't tell lies we are not playing gimmicks here some of you think it's an eye problem but it's a demonic thing I'm about to command it to leave you thank you Jesus even itching in the eyes will leave thank you Jesus now I command Eyes be healed, be healed now, be healed, be healed. Every blind eye open, every blind eye open, partial blindness be gone in the name of Jesus. Long sightedness, short sightedness, glaucoma, every eye condition be healed now. Please be checking yourselves. Check yourselves. God is doing miracles now. Check yourself. If you have any growth in your body, please check yourself. As you see God touching you, come out. You, I tell you, God is healing people. If there is any growth in any part of your body, what's wrong with him? Eye problem. Bring him. God is healing people. Look at, look at a miracle. Look at a big miracle. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at what is happening to these people. Look at eyes are opening. Come on, give Jesus praise. Eyes are opening. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle. Every kind of eye condition. Hallelujah. We'll take the testimony. Check yourself. Don't let the devil stop you. What's, his, what's the problem with him? Look at this. He can't. Eh? Praise the Lord. No, 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 no. There's no time for that. What is wrong with him? There's i can see completely yes who brought him here we came together with mama okay i'm going to pray for him as i pray for him keep testing him when he can see you just try him out the lord will heal him lay your hands on your no no let, let him lay his hands on you lay your hands by yourself on your eyes
I command new eyes by the power of the Christ. How long has this been? Does she speak English? One year, two months. One year, two months. Yeah. What happened to him? Uh, uh, it was glaucoma. It's glaucoma. So we went to the hospital and the doctor told me that he couldn't cure me, that she go meet any man of God to heal me. That he cannot help you. Yeah, so I'm from Zankwa in Zankong Kata local government. So I had you, this. You came program. all the way from Zankwa. Yes, sir. Oh my God. Jesus healed his eyes. Glaucoma. I command you to be gone. Bow to the name of Jesus. Bow to the name of Jesus. I command his eyes to open right now. Open right now. Please check him. Test him. See, test him. Test him. Just test him if he's seen anything. Can you say, don't be afraid. This is a factory. Just test him. Sister, stand up. What is the, eh? You saw light. What, are you seeing, oh my God, look at how this guy's eyes is so damaged. Huh? Can you see anything? I can't see. Look the at only it. thing I saw was the light I saw and it went You saw off. light? Yeah, when you just finished praying. So I just opened my eye, then it went off again. Okay, just keep looking at me. Please don't give up, all right? Get him a seat. Just keep looking at me. What happened to you? I saw a sharp light in my eye. You saw a sharp light. You see the same light again? Yes, a sharp light. You've been using glasses. I've been using glasses over two and a Who half knows years her? now. Who knows her? Ah, okay, you all know. Who is your roommate? Roommate, where are you? Come now, roommate. When we say roommate, where are you? You come out. You know her? So that you don't come out. You see, you know why we are doing this? Because of the stupidity around the body of Christ. Some people now can think that this is stage managed. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why we are calling the roommate. Do you know me? Eh? No, what I mean is, do I have a personal relationship with you? What happened now? Tell us the truth. I saw a sharp light in my eyes. A and sharp I, light. I, I fell down. And then you fell under the yes. anointing. For, for two and a half years, I can't concentrate for long. I can't read for more than one hour. Tears will just start falling off my eyes. Each until is, you use glasses. Yes, until Give I use glasses. Give us something to read. Something tiny. Bible. Where are those small, small Bibles? Read Isaiah 60 verse 1 and 2. I'm holding your glasses. Arise and shine, for the light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Come on, give Jesus praise. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. And right now, I see miracles everywhere. You were healed? Who Pastor. brought this boy? Okay. Uh, How are you? Pastor. Okay, wait, hold on. Let's hear the boy. Who brought him? I come alone. Alone? Yes, okay. Sir. He's old enough to respond now for himself. Is that true? Okay, what happened to you? As Please well, make sure we verify this. As I was praying from outside. Okay. Something entered me. So as as I fell down and I'm coming. Now I, I, I can't feel anything again. You then later, somebody hold me. Before I know, something started began working on my stomach. Something started working in your stomach. Yes, How sir. do you feel now? Was he blind? What was wrong? I Please feel check. better. You feel better. Yes, you were sir. sick. What was wrong with you? I was having stomach ache. Stomach ache. Yes, sir. Lay your hands. It must be perfected right now. Lay, hold me with one hand. You will see something moving, and that will be the end of it. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Who brought this small boy? I brought myself. You brought eh? I brought myself. You brought yourself. Ha! Could you speak English when you were his age? What's your name? My name is Victor. Your name is what? Victor. Victor. You mean they allow little children to come on their own like this? He lives around or he took transport? 
No, I came with my parents. Oh, you came with your parents? Yes. Oh, beautiful. Um, what was wrong with you? My eyes was itching me. Your eyes used to itch you? Yes. And then what happened? But now I can't feel it again. You can't feel it again? <laughs> to the shame of the devil. <laughs> Father, let this be perfected. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who else? Who else? Please. Only eye conditions. Okay. First God. I had these itchy eyes and it's always bringing out tears. The doctor recommended glasses, but I didn't go back to the doctor because okay. I didn't want to use them. But there, something hit my stomach and my eyes. Where? When I was standing over Where there. Where you were standing there? Who saw her? Is that true? Okay. Yes, sir. So I and it's gone. Me. Yes. Praise the Lord to the shame of the devil. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is perfected never to return again. From the beginning of this month, I've been having this... I don't know, every time I read, I skip the word or I just go blank. I don't know why. And it started from January. You what? I skip the word. Like when I start reading, I just skip the word or I just go blank. I don't know what happens to me. What and do you today, mean go blank? Epileptic yeah, or something? Today I was in class and my, I was, we were reading. My friend was not asking me, what's wrong with me? I'm reading the word. I'm mixing the word. I'm like, it started since this year. And she's like, okay, I need glasses. I'm like, I don't need glasses. Oh, when you are reading, yes, the, you will be skipping yes, the I'll words. Yes, I'll the word. I'll go blank, and I don't know why. What happened to you now? When we were praying, I laid my hands on my and my hands on my eye, and then a light just just hit me, and my hands touched. Light again. Pain, you see the and light. Then my eyes got very hot, and then your I eyes felt got hot. Open, yes, and you felt it open, open. To the shame of the devil, it will never come back again. Read Isaiah 51, just verse 1 and 2. Let's and see. And came to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hand, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are dig. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I call him alone, and, and blessed, I blessed and him, blessed him, and, I increased, and increased him. him. God bless you. It never returns it in Jesus' name. You too. Yeah. Come. It, okay. It started 2011. Um, I was having a pain in my eyes and an itch. So it's. I feel like um, each time it comes, I feel heaviness in my eyes. You feel heaviness. So in when your I eyes. went to Chica, they told me it's terigium. That is it's mostly terigium. That is. I'm not supposed to survive. It. That is some. Um, it's prominent among um, old people. So and when I went, they prescribed some medications for me. I went, I went and what got right now? So, what but happened? while the prayer was going on, I felt that heaviness was relieved from my eyes. It completely. Yeah. You feel any pain now? No. It's gone completely. Yeah. May it be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray. Sweetheart, how are you? Mm. What's your name? Mercy. We have brilliant children in Koinonia. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us smart children. You came on your own. Sister brought oh, your sister brought you. What was wrong with you? My eyes used to your eye used to eat you. Is he eating you now? What happened? When, when I was praying, I put my eye. You played your hand on your eyes. Uh huh. I, I saw that the thing have gone completely. Lord, in the name of Jesus, may it never return. In Jesus' name. All right, the last person. Okay. Sir, my eyes sometimes just to pain me. So, uh, me and my mother, we went to sick bay. They said that I needed classes. Okay. But since that day, my mother and I never went. So, sometimes I'll, my eye will, will be itching me. I'll okay. like, start, start feeling sleepy. But now it has gone. But now it has gone completely. Thank you, Jesus. May it never return again in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, while... The worship team just leads us in a powerful session of worship. I want you to line up all the sick people, especially if you came here from outside Zaria, please let's give you priority. Just come out quickly and then the rest join them. Please, you came with a sick person, now is the time to he to, to, uh, to, for them to receive their healing. Very, very quickly, please, we have a lot to do, time is not on our side. Very quickly, very quickly, worship team, please help us. Hallelujah. Please bring them out quickly. Sheda katabala da baba baba baba. Line them up very quickly. Please help them. Protocol ushers, direct them. Please let's save time inside and outside. If you are sick, whether you are outside Zaria or not, just come. Please come out. Now is the time for you to be healed. 
Thank you, Jesus, for your healing power. Those of us who are seated, begin to pray in tongues, please. My Don't be distracted. God is awesome. He can move that mountain of sickness will be moved right now. Whatever it is. Please keep coming quickly. Come and line, line yourself. As you come, just be praying and say, Lord, this is it. I am parting with this sickness. From the rain, say, My God, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weakened, forever He will reign. My God is awesome, my God is awesome. check yourself begin to check yourself let's pace them very quickly hallelujah as i pray for you please i want you to believe i already sense the healing anointing very strong on my hands and as i pray for you you'll be healed you'll be delivered no matter what it is please don't go back the same you don't have to go back the same you do not have to go back the same no matter what the issue is i want you to know that you are parting with this sickness right now thank you jesus Lord, I give you praise yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Awesome! 
accident look at me since I, when i think a week ago now you, you can't walk the the nurse bandaged my leg so then what happened i started i couldn't walk very well again so i removed the bandage why did you remove the bandage because pulse was going out pulse was going out of the leg yes where is it ah oh, goodness look at this look at me brother yes, sir. look at me He's paining you now. Look at me. Just stretch the leg. Look at me. It's a demon. This is not accident. Thank you, Jesus. Look at everybody seeing it. I'm happy you're seeing it. Show them, please. Put it on the screen. Now let this leg be healed right now. Right now. In the name of the Christ. Can you see the guy has suddenly become relaxed? This is somebody that could not sit down. Something affected the bone in the accident. I joined this bone back. Now, who is a witness that he really had the accident? Who knows? You saw him limping when he came. Okay. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Something is happening to you. Thank you, Jesus. I 
I fix this leg right now. Within days, this thing will dry up. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Walk. Walk. Come. Come. Walk. Come. Come. Walk. Do what you couldn't do. Just do what you couldn't do. Don't, don't, just do what you couldn't do. See, he's surprised. He's shocked looking at his leg. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Give Jesus praise. Thank you, Jesus. Look at, look at this. Look at what, hold on. See, the guy, what is happening to you? The leg is drying up. The leg is drying up. Drying up. You are feeling it now. Yes. Everybody clear the way for him. Rush, go and come back. Walk, go and come back. Go down there and come back. Look at this guy could not walk. He had an accident with this leg. Come, walk as fast as you can. Walk as fast as you can. Look at the boy is crying. Look at this. Lift your hands and thank the Lord. No man can do these things except God be with you. This is not for the glory of any man. Lord, we give you praise for that which you are doing in our midst. This leg dries up in the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the fire.
my God is awesome. He is awesome. He's awesome. of them the right you've never been able to use it no except with age except it's an age try to move it i can move it just where is which one which of them try to move it eh? just do what i'm telling you to do try to stamp it Without this, eh? Not far. But can you walk without this? Shortly. Very short. Mm. Can you try? Right now? Sure. Do you think you can? Hold my hands. Let's try. Stand up. Look at me. If anybody supports you, if someone supports you, will you be able to walk? If nobody supports you, can you walk? You will fall. Yes. Okay, let's see. Try to walk. Come.
Just please. Hold my hands. That devil of diabetes. It's time for you to leave now. Hypertension. You are a spirit. I command you out of her life and out of her family. Mommy, be healed now. Now. Take off everything you have put in her stomach and out you go now. Now! Did you bring your prayer requests? Please start passing them quickly. Look at me. God is healing you right now. The power of God is going through your hands. You're being healed right now. You're the same. Just pass your last, pass the request to the last person at the side. Outside, please do the same thing. Let's save time. Everything you have written on this request will be answered in the name of Jesus. Please pass it, pass it quickly. Totally free. You are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Beautiful form. You are the joy of the whole world. You are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Request, you quickly, are quickly. the joy of the Let's whole world. You are the great and mighty God. So greatly to be praised. Please ushers quickly, quickly, quickly. If you don't have your request, write you one are quickly. The joy of the whole world. Whole world. You are the great and mighty God. 
anyone attending to those outside? Those outside, please. Let's have their request. I hope there's a way of getting the ones on fa on Facebook and all of that. If we can't, we can just reach out to them by faith. Please make sure that you have a prayer request. God answers prayers here. Yeah. Please, everybody, rise if you can. Please, this is a very prophetic moment. Please, we'll start praying. The rest can come and join us. The other Pastor, please. Praise God. Listen, please understand that this is not a religion that is done every Miracle Sunday. This is done on instruction and this is biblical. The Bible says when Ezekiah was threatened, he took the threat letter before God on the altar and dropped it there. Are you getting my point? These requests have threatened the lives and the families of many of us. That's why we are bringing it before God and we are saying, Lord, if you do not step in, nothing can be done. But I want you to know that within the next five minutes or thereabout, as we begin to prophesy and lay hands on this, the angel of the Lord's presence will go to different families, different places and begin to work miracles. Hallelujah. So all you're going to do is just stretch your hands here and be praying in tongues while the worship team leads us in worship, just keep worshiping as they pray in tongues. Is that okay? Please go ahead. Shekata ba 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 ba. You do wonders in me. Shekata ba 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 kata ba. Unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come. My God, in the name of Jesus, we trust you. Stretch your hands, O oh God, and visit your people. Stretch your hands, O oh God, and visit your people. Stretch your hands, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands, O God. Lord, let impossible miracles happen. We bring this before the altar. That which threatens the Christian experience of your people. My God, I pray that every request here be turned into testimonies. Say faithful God. Let there be deliverance, so God. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
God of all flesh, Zarapakata Shilia, Lezarika Patasha, we declare, Lazata Patasha, the one that parted the Red Sea, Raka Patashitalaba, Ribi Zuri Brani Nekocho Shitalaba, do the impossible right now, do the impossible, do the impossible, do the impossible. You break upon the rain and you part it into two. Do the impossible right now. Behold the request of your people. Behold their heart desires. Let there, let there be miracles now. Intervene now. Intervene now. Intervene now. In the name of Jesus. We declare way where there seems to be no way right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as a, as a result of an intervention, let there be influx of testimonies. Testimonies, testimonies in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that which was impossible with men, oh God, will they will declare that with this request, so God let, the, let there be possibility right now in the name of Jesus. Miracles, miracles, open doors in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, for your great intervention. Thank you, mighty God, for the great turnaround. Bless the name forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. We command that these requests be turned into testimonies. In the name of Jesus, let there be mighty miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone, stand. Everywhere, please stand. I'm about to prophesy into our lives. Lay your hand on our chest. Out now. release her and go now hallelujah and he said to me prophesy and I prophesied as I was commanded not as I wanted I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound a rattling sound and bones began to be joined to bones and he said unto me son of man prophesy to the four winds and I prophesied O wind breathe upon the slain and the wind came and breathed upon the slain and there stood an exceeding great army I want to prophesy over your life I want you to shout amen at the top of your voice. Please believe it. Prophecy is creative. Hallelujah. Please play strings. Thank you father because you always hear me when I call Lord as I prophesy over your people let it not be a ritual I pray nothing will happen if your power does not make it happen therefore I pray that the angels that confirm the words of his messengers may they back this word and bring it to pass let this word become your word, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word become your word, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this word become your word, O God. 
Hallelujah. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham, son of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And the prophet said in Samaria, By this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, the Bible says, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. By a prophet, he brought them out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. He says, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. I'm not singing. Just concentrate. My God, would you step in and do the impossible? Do the impossible. Change the unchangeable. Change the unchangeable. My God, step in. Do the impossible. Do the impossible. Please lift your hands. In the name that is above all names. The name that causes demons to tremble. The name that causes breakthrough and deliverance. I command right now. Let there be supernatural restoration for everything that you have lost. Restoration now. Restoration now, restoration by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive restoration. Everything you have lost, for whatever reason it was lost, I command restoration of opportunities in the name of Jesus. Restoration of destiny help us. Restoration of the years that the canker worm has eaten. Now, hallelujah. Every handwriting against your destiny that has said 2014 will be a year of frustration in the name that is above all names. Be cancelled now. 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 In the book of Job, he says. In six things will he deliver you, yea, in seven things. And one of them is the scourging tongues of men. When men sit down and make enchantment in the name of the God that I serve, every cause, every pronouncement over your life, because now, because now, because now, because now, then the Bradisha Lacabaro Sadana Banabana. For he has broken the gates of brass and he has caught the 
iron in sunder. My God, I pray. Every door that has been closed over your people. In the name that is above all names. If God be in this place. I command those two leaf gates. Be open now. Be open now. I prophesy be open now. By the power of prophecy. Be open now. Everyone called jobless in this place. In the name that is above every other name. Satele kabande kretisakad. Ashetete balakata bregede balada bagada bagada. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And they brought Mephibosheth, a man who was not qualified, but the favor of God made him to sit at table with David. I pray by the favor of God, wherever you need favor for jobs, I prophesy, receive it now. Receive it now from the north to the south to the east to the west I command jobs every man that has said over his dead body for you to move forward may his prophecy come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ I want to break that power that limits men every limitation every embargo that has been placed over your life that is said thus far have you come i speak from the heavens in the name of jesus limitations be lifted now be lifted now be lifted now i command break records break records set new records do what has not been done i pray for everyone whose family member is overdue to be promoted the bible says withhold not good from who him who is due when it is within your power to do so it is within their power to bring the promotion Therefore, I pray in the name that is above all names, we enforce that promotion now. We enforce it now. Everything that has died in your life, hear ye the word of the Lord. Come alive now. Dead relationships come alive now. I pray for your academics. For he has given me the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak the word in due season to him that is weary. He said, my tongue is the pen of the, right, the ready writer. My heart has indicted a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. Daniel was made 10 times better. He said, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your enemies will not be able to resist nor gain say. That when you stand before them, you shall not think of what to say. For in that very hour, it will be the spirit of your father speaking. I pray, everyone called doll. I change that testimony now. everyone on probation we take you out of it now we take you out of it now everyone on probation we take you out of it now every missing script every injustice done to everyone i command the angel of the lord to go to every department every faculty let justice be done in the name of Jesus.
and everyone that has vowed that you will not graduate in the name that is above all names we graduate you right here we graduate you right here in the name of jesus christ we graduate you right here that cause of hardship that is upon our families they walk like elephants and eat like ants tonight in the name that is above all names let that cause of hardship be lifted let it be lifted i speak to every job here receive increase i speak to every business here grow i command you to grow i speak to every ministry expand and break levels in the name of jesus christ let the favor of god that can mark you and distinguish you among your peers i prophesy may that mantle of favor hit you where you are in the name of jesus christ may that favor hit you where you are in the name of jesus may that favor hit you where you are may that favor change you may it cause men to bless you hallelujah and i pray may the presence of god go with you everywhere you go everyone struggling with any habit here that is not of god pornography masturbation whatever it is it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ it ends here tonight in the name of jesus christ every dead spiritual life every dead prayer life every dead word study life in the name that is above all names come alive now receive the fire for prayer take it take it take it take it take it take it the fire for prayer take it the spirit of prayer and supplication take it let it come upon you like a tornado in the name of jesus grace to pray grace to study grace to understand hallelujah every hidden gift every hidden talent every ability that can bless you that has refused to arise i pray the bible says the gift of a man makes room i pray every hidden gift that the devil has buried i prophesy let it come alive and bless you now let it come alive and bless you now thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting my head thank you for lifting thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting my head when I cry for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. One more time. Thank you for lifting. 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 My head. My head. Hallelujah. Ancient words yeah. ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come 
With open hearts, oh let the ancient words sing. One more time, can we sing that chorus? Ancient words, ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with our I began to take a study about the history of the church and the transformation in Nigeria. And I came across some very interesting things because um, we have celebrated great men, God's generals, and all of these people. But then as, as I began a study on the generals of faith in this country, I was astonished to see the amazing dimensions of grace and power and influence. Hallelujah. History records that people walked upon this land just like us. Men and women who did terrible and awesome things. Hallelujah. And when you study through church history, the Bible gives us an account of people. Men and women, generals of the faith, who access certain deep dimensions in the spirit. Came into levels of intimacy with the Holy Spirit that is not common in our generation. And many walked in dimensions of miracles. I read an extract of a book one time how that there was a, a, a Catholic um, monk who when they were trying to uh, put the wood in their church, the wood was halfway, it was short, and he just held the wood and pulled it. Men who lived in our days and time. Men who interacted. Listen to someone like Elijah. Elijah was going with Elisha and when he got to the Red Sea, he just parted it. He didn't discuss, didn't make any, and it was not a big miracle. The Bible never records Elisha saying, wow, what is this? It meant it was a common place. And so, Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Hmm. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways and see. And ask for the ancient parts. Where is the good way? And walk in it and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk. Hallelujah. There has been a rejection. From many believers and many people to step up. Into these deep realms and deep dimensions in the spirit. There were certain ancient secrets that our fathers understood. That granted them access to deep and terrible things. The Bible makes us to understand. That at a certain time. Jesus entered a room. He didn't use any publicity material. And the Bible said they heard of him. How? We do not know. But the Bible says men came and the room was filled. And the power of God was present to heal. And the people were so expectant. They were sure that they would be healed. And the Bible says one of these people came and cut open a roof because of the assurance and desperation they had that they would be healed. Terrible dimensions of faith recorded in scripture. The Bible in Hebrews chapter 11 gives us an, a, an archive of great things. The Bible talks about women who received their dead back to life. Talked about men who shut the mouths of lions. Great men who subdued kingdoms, conquered territories. There were ancient secrets that men, our fathers had. A path and a direction that they walked in. Many things that we discuss today were not discussed by the men of old. For instance, they never had conversations about trying to fine-tune their hearing God. It was natural by default. We teach and we have conferences today to sharpen our perception. But the least among these people walk in realms of accuracy. Hallelujah. And I strongly believe that through history and through the activity of religion, we have lost certain parts that great men and generals of faith walked in. I was studying about certain great people in this country. Great men like Archbishop Benson Idahosa of blessed memory. And the terrible exploits in the spirit that these men did. They interacted with angels, subdued kingdoms. We talked about the great men like Apostle Babalola. 
men who did terrible things. It was told that at a certain time when this man began to minister, he was literally levitating because of the power and the influence. Great women like Catherine Kuhlman walked in such dimensions of the glory that at the time she was walking on the stage and even when she left the platform, she was still floating in the air. These are recorded historical facts. Men and women who understood the Holy Ghost. They understood certain ancient principles of the anointing. It was told of the great man called E.W. Kenyon that he walked in such dimension of faith and power. No one would die in his church less than 70. He will raise you back to life. A man who carried such ability of the spirit that when he looked at someone with a piece's bone, a fractured bone, all he would do is look at it under the anointing and the bones would rattle themselves back to perfect order. These were men who had something higher to celebrate, not miracles. Hallelujah. The ancient parts. The Bible talks about, not the Bible, I'm sorry, history. Tells us about John Lake. A great man of faith called John Lake. And the Bible records that at a certain time when a plague hit South Africa, that John Lake was helping to bring out the dead bodies and the foam had the ability to kill you in just minutes. But this guy wouldn't die. He wasn't affected. And the doctors asked, they said, what is this? And he said he was showing them the reality of God living in a mortal body. It was a depth of revelation he had. And he knew that he was literally immersed in divinity and he carried out an experiment recorded he said place some of the virus on a microscope and they saw them moving he said place them on my hand let me show you how much of god resides in me and when they dropped it they checked it back and they were all dead recorded god living in a man it was said that at the time he laid his hands on a woman and when the woman went back home and removed her clothes she saw the marks of his hands the imprint of the, the dimension of power that came out from such a man. It was recorded of great men like A.A. Allen, how that someone came with an alligator skin, and A.A. Allen held his skin and peeled that skin and gave him a new one. Literally peeled it off. And they saw a new skin. Hmm. Terrible things in righteousness. I read about... Um, some, some folks in church, in church history, how that their church was standing against the government road. And the government said they were coming to demolish the church. And the people laid their hands on the building and as they prayed, they shifted the building out. These are historical realities. Men and women who walked in these strange dimensions of the spirit, shut the mouths of lions, subdued kingdoms, the things we boast about was their everyday life. How did Jesus minister to 5,000 people without a mic? That's a miracle in itself. It's so miraculous we cannot even fathom it. For three days, he held those people on the mountain spellbound. None of them asked for food. He was one who requested that these people eat. There are certain ancient parts that have been lost. Today we glory over the basic things of the spirit. When someone falls under the anointing, we get up and jump and we say, that is it. But there are heights. There are depths. There are dimensions. And in this teaching series, we are trusting God to explore the ancient secrets. What did these people hold? What reality? I began, let me tell you something. In 2005, I started studying on Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. I Every time you raise songs like, I enter the holy of holies, there's something it does to your spirit. When you sing a song like, yes, you are the king, it blesses you. But there is something about these Jewish songs. And I began to study. I said, what is it about these Jews? And the songs that they sang, it, it has a way of interacting with your spirit, man. And every time these people sang, the Bible says when they came out, they said, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. They sang the songs that Moses wrote. 
And these songs had a way of moving things and shifting things in the realm of the spirit. What was it about these songs? Terrible songs in the spirit. That every time they lifted it, they were not trying to sing special number. It seemed as if there was a code they were touching in the spirit. There are certain things, friends, that we need to understand if we must rule and reign. Ancient secrets. The Bible talks to us about Philip. How that at a certain time, the Spirit took him. And he appeared somewhere. There are great men and women who are walking in those dimensions. Men like Joshua Mills. He was quietly sitting and praying. And the next thing the Lord told him, go into an elevator. And he went there and suddenly he found himself in China. Straight, bodily, found himself in China. And he went for a meeting, ministered to the people, and came back and just saw himself in his room. That account happened with John Lake. <laughs> there are depths, there are heights, there are dimensions, there are realms. The Bible talks about a man called Enoch. That that man walked with God and experienced certain levels and heights of intimacy that this earth was not worthy to carry him. The Bible talks to us about men like Elijah. That when it was time for Elijah to be transported, he knew the exact exit point between heaven and earth. He wasn't confused about it. He knew that it was beyond the Jordan. And as soon as he crossed the Jordan, he waited. And he said, any moment from now, I'll be going. And he told Elijah, he said, if you can see me as I'm lifted. Ancient parts, ancient secrets, ancient realities. So by the grace of God, in this series, we are going to be examining the ancient parts. I've had all kinds of religious teachings about the ancient parts. What men call the ancient parts is not what the Bible calls the ancient parts. Because a lot of people don't come far enough. We have to go back to the beginning. What secret was communicated to these people? Ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with, with open hearts oh let the ancient words in part what did jesus do to the 12 disciples that shook them so much you know i read the bible and i discovered that jesus didn't pray for the disciples many times i do not read of an impartation service but this man carried an anointing. How did it get to them? We have all manner of prayer meetings. And there is only little energy that is generated in the spirit. We have to accept that there is something we are missing. And come together as a body. And say let us begin to search this ancient secret. Men who had control over territories. Joshua stood upon a city. And commanded the sun to stand still. Alter geography at will. We need men who will take charge of territories. Who will stand and speak. It didn't take the apostles long. Many of us enter cities. And we stayed there for years. And our community does not even know that we are there. But the Bible tells us about the apostles. Ordinary men. All they needed to do was to step into a city with certain secrets they knew where to go to and what buttons to touch in the spirit and they kept whole nations at, at uh, a standstill because of certain levels of understanding how many of us will agree that there are things we need to know in the spirit there are certain realities and together i like us to open up ourselves even as god begins to communicate some of these things to our hearts Father, we accept that there is more. We thank you for what you have done in our lives so far. We have healed the sick. We've casted out devils. We've seen levels of miracles in our different spheres. We, have, we cannot deny the fact that your grace has been at work in our lives. But Lord, we will not remain in this level. We know there is more. It takes more than we have now to touch the world. And we humble ourselves and say, teach us, great rabbi, let us hear your voice tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, the ancient parts, that's going to be the first series we'll be considering. And we're going to be 
examining and rediscovering ancient secrets, certain things about the spirit, hallelujah, and activities and operations in the spirit. And today I want to talk on the anointing. I'm going to be doing a powerful teaching on the anointing. Listen, if your heart is open, many of you will encounter something tonight that will last you forever. Please believe it. Please believe it. I want to do a very, very quality teaching on the anointing tonight. When you see a man do terrible things, you say, such an anointed man. An anointed man of God. And so we are going to be discussing the anointing. Because this is one of the ancient secrets that our fathers knew. They understood something about the anointing and the operation of the anointing that we do not understand. Anointing tonight fall on me. Anointing. The kind of empowerment that the ancient had fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to understand in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all, not some, all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. There's something about the anointing that the saints of old knew and understood. For many of us, the anointing is just a little dot of oil on your head or just a manifestation that throws you down. But tonight, I trust that by the Spirit of God, He will help us understand what the anointing is. Very quickly, we have to rush. What is the anointing? The Hebrew word that was used uh, uh, um, for anointing, it means to smear with oil. To rob a man, to smear him with oil. It was principally a mechanism. It was given in the days of Moses when he was building the tabernacle to consecrate the, the priests, those who would minister before God, to impart the divine ability and the energy of God into them. And so the anointing is simply God's energy. The anointing is God's energy, God's empowerment upon a man. Not just upon any man, upon a believer. God's empowerment. God's supernatural ability upon your spirit. A supernatural divine empowerment upon your spirit. The anointing is God's certification upon a man. It's God's authorization upon that man. The ability to perform. Hallelujah. The anointing is God's energy. His very ability to do work. In physics, we define power as work done per unit time or energy expended per unit time. That's the exact definition of the anointing. Let me tell you something. The anointing is not synonymous to power. The anointing is God's power. We mystify all kinds of things. The, the result of our quest has made us to develop all kinds of theories. The word of God is plain, basic, and simple. The anointing is exactly what God's power is. There's nothing more. There are all kinds of stories about different things. No. The anointing is God's ability. is God's power. From the Old Testament to the New Testament. All through we see that the anointing of the Spirit. God's enablement. God's empowerment. Came upon ordinary men. He said in Exodus chapter 31. I have anointed Bezalel. A divine empowerment. An enablement by the Spirit came upon Bezalel and made him supernaturally creative above and being beyond his natural capacity and so the anointing of God's spirit is his authorization is his divine ability say after me the anointing is God's empowerment upon my life it is empowerment upon you to enable you represent him Every time you send a man to do something, you empower that man with all the tools and the resources it takes. So the anointing of God's spirit upon you 
being that he has sent us as ambassadors, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, the Bible tells us that we are ambassadors. Hallelujah. And so, having sent us as, amb as ambassadors, he now gives us his authorization, the legal rights to act in his capacity, the legal right to act in his stead, to be lords and to rule and to reign in the sphere of influence that he has put us. And that divine ability is what the Bible calls the anointing. There has been a lot of controversy about the subject of the anointing. Several people in their quest to try to get it have not gotten it. And so they have disabused it and just told people God just is, is just like that. After this teaching tonight, you will see that you truly have no function in the kingdom without the anointing. Hallelujah. There are so many nice, innocent believers who want to do things for God without his empowerment upon their lives. And we end up messing things up. Realize Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 that it is not by power. It is not by might. That word power and might there uh, connotes the power of a man and the might of a man. But it's by the spirit. The activity of the spirit. Hallelujah. Very quickly. The anointing was the ancient secret to the life. One of the ancient secrets Every time I study the lives of the people of old in the Bible, I keep seeing certain things. I trace the times of their impact to times when they encountered the anointing. And friends, they didn't encounter what we call the anointing today. They encountered the real anointing. Because when they encountered the anointing, it showed instantly in their lives that there was something beyond them. Hallelujah. And it's my desire that God will empower us so that we'll be so full of his glory and anointing and his power. Then we are able to release that river that's within us to our world. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? And so the anointing was the ancient secret, one of the ancient secrets to the life of impact authority. The Bible makes us to understand that a man called Saul, when he was anointed by Samuel, he wasn't a prophet. Was a weak and a beggarly person. But the Bible says that when the anointing came upon him, that he turned into another man. The anointing of God has the ability to transform even your physical structure. The anointing is so powerful that when it comes upon your life, it adjusts you to the best position where you can dispense it. Hmm. Hallelujah. Several levels of victory in scripture were directly accounted to the anointing. Impartation of the Holy Spirit. Impartation of God's divine ability. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 4 from verse 15 to 21 when you read the account of Jesus. The Bible says he entered the temple as his custom was. And took the scroll that was written by the prophet Isaiah and began to read unto them. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. For he has that was a secret. For he has anointed the man, Jesus. It was the anointing that made him Christ. The word Christ comes from the Greek word Christos. It means the anointed one and his anointing. And so he wasn't just Jesus Christ because he wanted to be Jesus Christ. He was Jesus. The anointing made him the Christ. And so when the anointing comes upon you, it makes you the Christ. Not heresy trying to be above Jesus. The Bible says the kingdoms of this world, Revelation 11 verse 15, are come into the, to become the kingdoms of our God and of we, his Christ. He's anointed. Hallelujah. Very important. In Acts chapter 10 verse 38, Philip speaking full of the, I mean, Peter speaking under the anointing in Cornelius' house. The Bible makes us to understand that in chapter 38, in verse 38 of chapter 10, he, once again he told us the secret. He said, how God anointed. That means imagine the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. He so smeared him with God's ability. And as a result, he went about doing good. So he wasn't doing good just because he had the heart to do good. He needed the backing and the empowerment. 
There are several believers that have very nice hearts to do things for God, to win souls for God, to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to bring the life and the power of God in our time and our generation. But we are incapacitated because we have lost touch of an ancient secret that your desire is not enough. Your desire plus the ability and the energizing of the spirit is what equips you for impact. We have several people that cry unto God and say, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We want to put, put a hunger in our hearts for souls. But sometimes we need to balance it and pray and say, Lord, give us the impartation that will back up that desire. The Bible records somewhere in scripture, one of the synoptic gospels, how that when Jesus came down from the mountain with um, Peter, James, and John, he met the zealous, willing disciples who were struggling with an epileptic patient. Have you read that in scripture? They had such passion. It pained them. They really wanted the person healed. But it, it's, you don't just cast out devils because you look good. There is a supernatural impartation that gets them out of the way. It's called the anointing. Ancient secrets. Jesus had just come down from the mountain. Rubbing off the glory of God. And when he came down from the mountain, the disciples tried and did every formula and magic they are doing, just like many people are doing today. All kinds of magical formulas. And the Bible said nothing happened. And when Jesus came, they ran to Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus rebuked a deaf and dumb spirit. How can he rebuke a deaf and dumb spirit from an epileptic patient? What's the relationship between a deaf and dumb spirit? Ancient secret. He said you have an anointing and it teaches you all things. The ability in you quickens your discernment so you stop wasting time and beating about the bush. With precision and accuracy, you know exactly what to do. The Bible talks to us how that and Paul, standing by the anointing, saw one who was speaking against Christ. A lady by the spirit of divination. And looked at her. And the anointing was quickened in him. And he discerned that although her words were physically correct, there was a wrong spirit initiating it. And the Bible says he took authority over her. We need an anointed generation. We need men and women who understand these ancient secrets. Hear me, friends. If the anointing is not upon your life, forget about impact. You will have the desire. You will try. It will not work. There are so many people today who are running in life, in business, in ministry, in the art sports, everywhere without the anointing. One definition of frustration is to try to do God's work without the anointing. It takes the anointing. Are you getting blessed tonight? Hallelujah. Very important. So the anointing is what? God's supernatural ability upon you. Hallelujah. Help me with a handkerchief. The Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons. Handkerchiefs and aprons. Is handkerchief a living thing? Hear me. Is it a living thing? Does it have faith? Does it have the ability to ask? Does it have the ability to fast? Does it have the ability to worship? An ordinary handkerchief came in contact with God's ability. And the Bible says devils were casted. What did they see in that handkerchief? What they were seeing in the realm of the spirit was not the handkerchief. What they were seeing was the one who anointed it. I told you that the anointing is God's authorization. Every time you sign a letter, what happens? You stamp it. Correct? You stamp it and seal it. God's authorization. Supernatural ability of the spirit. Hallelujah. Powerful ability of the spirit. I'll tell you very quick things about the anointing. We may not go in depth tonight because of time. Number one, the anointing is tangible. The anointing can be transferred. The anointing is what? Tangible. And the anointing can be transferred. Are you following me? The anointing is what? Tangible. And the anointing can be transferred. Let me show you something. Please come. Can you come? You come, sir. Let me show you something. Watch this. All of you just watch what I'm going to do. Watch this. Hold this handkerchief. You hold it. Watch this. I want to prove to you 
that the anointing can be transferred. The anointing is going to be transferred from me through this guy, through this material, and to him. Are you following me now? This is the ability. I want to prove to you that the anointing can be transferred. Watch this. The anointing, the supernatural enablement, and the power and the energy of the spirit. See, I feel the anointing leaving me right now. Hmm. I'm even seeing it in the spirit. <laughs> the power of the spirit. The anointing can be transferred. That's one characteristic of the anointing. It moves from one location to the other. What directs it? Faith. Faith. I taught you what faith is. What gave me the audacity? I believe God is faithful. And what happened? I responded. This is not just to make a show. I hope you understand what I'm saying. We're not just trying to make, we're in a serious business here. I want to teach you practically about the anointing so that you will step out of this place equipped with an ability that you are full of the Holy Ghost and it's the anointing on you. What is it in a handkerchief? The supernatural empowerment. Why? Because God is at work in a man. When God is at work in a man, that's the same way you lay hands on the sick. Are you seeing that's the dynamics of what happens. They shall lay hands on the sick. And many of you have not received certain levels of results because you don't know what happens in the realm of the spirit as you lay hands on the sick. Now you understand that when you lay hands on the sick, you may not feel like something is happening. How be it there is a flow of glory? Because Christ, the Christos, the one who anoints men, has smeared you with his presence. And so you may look ordinary, but you are a career of divine glory. Are you getting blessed tonight? The anointing can be transferred. I just showed you now. I hope you never forget this. The things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, the things that we have handled. The anointing can be transferred. It can move from one location to the other. Hallelujah. Number two, the anointing can increase. Ezekiel chapter 47 talks about the river that flowed from the east side of the temple. And the Bible says that one held a rod and measured a thousand cubits and it was ankle deep. And he measured a thousand cubits again and it was to the knees. He measured a thousand cubits and it was to the loins. And he measured a thousand cubits and it was a river that could not be crossed. And he said wherever that river went, the fish there and whatever was there, there would come alive. Ezekiel 47. There are different levels and dimensions of the anointing. As you begin to walk with God, there are certain levels of the anointing. As you remain in the things that he has called you to do and as you serve him diligently, through your hunger and through your obedience to his principles, he begins to increase those levels of the anointing. And as the anointing increases upon your life, your sphere of influence is increased. As your sphere of influence is increased, your degree of impact, your degree of impact is increased. There's no point desiring more of the anointing when you are not ready to do something with the one you have. Many of us want more, want more. There are sick people in our environment. Ancient secrets. Ancient words ever true. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words seem fine. Number three, your body has the ability to conduct the anointing. Your physical mortal body has the ability to be a superconductor of the anointing. Your mortal body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, has the supernatural ability to conduct the anointing. You can be a literal conductor of the anointing. Such that you carry the glory of God. When you sit upon a, a seat, you leave a deposit of that glory. And someone else will just stand up and come and sit there. And after a while, you find out that certain devils are crying out of the person. You were not even there. See, if you understand tonight's message, you will perform more miracles unconsciously than you will consciously. 
when I began to walk in the anointing, I didn't understand some of these things I'm teaching. And so it was like a tab that didn't have a valve. Everywhere I went, I would just throw, ask, ask them, they were all witnesses. Everywhere, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, I would just throw everybody up and down. I couldn't understand what was happening to me. But now spiritual maturity brings you to a point where although you are anointed, it is kept until when needed. So that all these childish things people just do flying left, right, and there with the anointing. The anointing is not an instrument for marketing your ministry. The grace of God is what markets your ministry. Yeah. Hallelujah. So that when you don't stand to dispense the anointing, it's not a proof of inadequacy. It's a proof of spiritual maturity. Are you getting blessed? Very quickly, what are some of the benefits of the anointing? Number one, the anointing causes you to function in unusual dimensions of grace and reality. The anointing of God empowers you to function in unusual dimensions. Come, Steve, let me, please just play your strings. Can you just play your strings? Listen. Steve was my roommate when we were in 200 level and Andy together and we had dramatic moments in the spirit when sometimes we would just worship and the literal Shekinah of God will come what is it about this thing he's playing because he's anointed are you following me now and so as he plays the anointing flows from these strings and it has the ability to enter you many people sing special number without the consciousness of the anointing Beautiful voices, but as they clap for you, your song dies with you on the stage there. People cannot even remember what you are saying. But then you hear certain people. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. I want to see you. I want to hear from you. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, I want to see you. Hallelujah. And the impact of the dimension of the anointing they function with will enter your spirit. And for days, while you are sleeping, that song is so. How many of you know Pastor Chris Delvan? When Pastor Chris stands and he begins to minister, he comes from a plane of the anointing. It's not about what he's saying. What, what is it about that kind of song? It's not just about the word. There is an anointing. There is grace. There is power. The ability of the spirit. Hallelujah. And so we have many people who rehearse so much. They do everything and they forget that ancient secret. The anointing. Many times ministers stand on stage and do all the well theological researches and as you're speaking, the people are just sleeping because it takes more than your English to move them. There is a depth of anointing and glory. That's why you can stand and speak and everybody says you were speaking to me. You didn't know their needs, but the anointing. That ancient secret that our fathers knew and understood that made them to communicate the word of God with power. Every time you speak under the anointing, your words come like fire. It's like a rock. When the people receive it, they cannot explain the activity that happens in their spirits. Because there is a touch of eternity. And every time, what enraptures them, sometimes even after the meeting, they may not even remember what you said. But when you ask them, were you blessed? They say, yes. How? They say, honestly, I can't explain. But I know that I carried something. It's called the anointing. So the anointing of the Spirit, His supernatural empowerment in your life, has the ability to cause you to walk in unusual levels of grace. Unusual. Levels that are not, it's not you. When men see, they know. They see an ordinary man doing supernatural things things above your age above your gender above your level of exposure 
Mm. The anointing of the Spirit. It's compelling. And so you stand as an ordinary man. Every time you listen to E.A. Adeboy, humanly speaking, if that man were not anointed, I don't think you have up to 10 members. Because when you stand to hear him speak, he says, I will give you a little story. And then uh, after that, we will trust Baba to give miracles. And while this man is talking, there are wheelchairs hey. lifting left, right, and center. Come on. It's more than your English, brother. It's a lot more than your English. It's more than that. When you see great men like W.F. Kumuyi, when you see great men, all kinds of ministers, they stand under the anointing. And someone in his house who is streaming life, in his house, they are quietly seated in their house there and the anointing that doesn't know time and distance. How many of us believe what I'm teaching? See, I trust God that in Koinonia, that everything we teach, we will walk in the reality of it. Hallelujah. Andy Ambassage, that's his stage name. We were all together. I knew the times when he was building, allowing the anointing of God to infuse in his spirit. It's just barely a year he came out public. And the people, the levels, the dimensions. His music, his raps and his songs are compelling. You will open your mouth and just watch him because he's ministering under the anointing. It's a terrible thing to watch a man under the anointing. He may look frail, my God. But when that mantle comes upon him, it's like, it's like water. It's no longer the same man. You see a man just laughing with you. You came and you hugged him. Five minutes later, you cannot come near him. What suddenly happened? It's the anointing. The supernatural ability of the spirit. You sleep on the same bed with him. You ate breakfast with him. Now you cannot even hold the mic from his hand. It's called the anointing. It's an ancient secret. So many of us have zeal to do great things for God. But then without the anointing, it's impossible. Absolutely impossible. The benefits of the anointing grant you unusual grace. Unusual. Not common. Unusual. They looked at Jesus and said, what, what, kind, of, what kind of wisdom is this? What kind of man is this? Number two, the anointing causes your talents, your giftings, your potentials to be activated. The anointing. Exodus chapter 31. I have anointed Bezalel. Yeah. When the anointing came upon Bezalel, because God had given an instruction to build the tabernacle, and he gave certain precise dimensions, and they knew that that level of precision would not be for a man in this realm. And suddenly there was a supernatural empowerment. And Bezalel had supernatural insight. Listen, hear me friends. When the anointing of God comes upon your brain, comes upon your mind, you become a fearful wonder. Fearful wonder. Your giftings, your potentials, your abilities are supernaturally activated. Undeniably activated. That everyone that comes around you understands that this is not. When you are a leader under the anointing, you will bring decisions and suggestions from the spirit that will dumbfound the wisdom of men. Hallelujah. So the anointing activates, it stirs up your talents, potentials and gifts. Number three, the anointing brings you into favor and access. Hey, It says because of thy ointment, the virgins love thee. We always use that scripture to mean men and relationship. Well, yes, on one side. But on another side, that's Sons of Solomon's, I believe, chapter 1. It says, because of thy ointment, there is a power of attraction. There is favor. There is access. When you look at a man who is truly anointed, he must be well favored. Because Jesus was anointed, the Bible says he grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. Part of the things that the anointing of God came upon Jesus to do was to declare the accepted, to declare the favor of the Lord. The year of his favor. 
When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon your life, it commands supernatural favor. Anywhere, not just in Zaria. Anywhere. Britain, America, anywhere. When you truly carry the anointing, there is beauty and glory that the anointing brings. Watch people who are anointed. They always look younger. They always look fresher. You think it's just their cream. There is an activity of the spirit. This is reality. This is reality. It's what the anointing is able to do. As the anointing is activated in your life, there is favor, supernatural favor. You step into someone's office who is just driving people, but you step in with the anointing. And the person wants to shut the door and he looks at you. He says, you again. Oh so, yeah, well, I don't know why. Oh, now you know why. It's called the anointing. It's called the anointing. Shaka by the other. It's the ancient secret. The Bible makes us to understand that Esther smeared herself in chapter 2 with oil. For one solid year, she was anointing herself. And as it were, the customs of the king. The Bible makes us to understand that when Vashti was dismissed out of the palace, many women were paraded together. And Esther, having anointed herself for one solid year, the Bible says she passed the king once. The king said, that's alright. I don't need any more parade. I found my bride. Supernatural ability of the spirit. And then at a certain time, when she needed to stand and advocate for the nation of Israel, according to Jewish customs in those days, all right, it was prohibited for any of the king's wives to just enter his inner chamber without his permission. The penalty was death. Now Mordecai had urged her to go and advocate for the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. And now she said, if I perish, I perish. But then she remembered the anointing that was on her. The Bible says, the woman got up and went. When the king saw her, that devil that causes him to kill people. I mean, this is someone who banished Vashti just because she refused to come and display herself. She didn't break any rule. She just refused. He wanted to display. Bible history tells us Vashti was a very beautiful woman. Drop dead, stunning beauty. Hallelujah. Now the king wanted to use her and, and market himself. And she refused and he banished her. But here was Esther. She broke an obvious rule that she knew. But because she was anointed. He said, because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. He says, therefore God, even God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Above your fellows. Supernatural anointing. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? The degree to which you are anointed, friends, is directly proportional to your level of spiritual exploit. That's what, what, why what is possible for one person may not be possible for another person. Hallelujah. I was told that a great man of God, Reverend Dr. Uma Okwai, went for a meeting somewhere and it was supposed to be a healing and a miracle meeting and when he went there, he was ministering and the Holy Ghost told him that Tell the people to go and come back tomorrow. We heal the sick. And he announced it. And when he announced it and went and sat back, some of the young ministers, you know, we young ministers really need to be careful. These fathers may look archaic, but they have some of these ancient secrets. And some of young, zealous ministers like me just got up and said, no way. Now faith is God is going to move. And he was just saying, God will move. God, people were just staring at him like this. And while that happened, Uma Akbar, you know he's not a man that takes it easy. He just got up and collected the mic. He said to prove to you that it's not that the anointing is not there. There are five people. That's how the power of God broke out. Miracles started happening. He said, but it's his obedience. And Uma Akbar wanted to curse the person there. You know him. He doesn't joke with anything. He just wanted to curse the person. The anointing of the spirit. Another thing the anointing gives you is the anointing gives you audacity and confidence. If you don't have the anointing, forget it. You will always be ashamed. Ashamed of every meeting they invite you to go. Ashamed of every time you need to speak. Ha! The ability of the spirit. It gives you confidence and audacity. What gives you the assurance that they invite you for a meeting where there are people and you know the power of God will touch them? 
And sometimes the ministers tell you what their plight is. They say people don't get filled with the Holy Spirit in this church. They are hardened. But we are trusting the grace upon your life. Then the man of God comes. They lodge you in a nice hotel. You dress and wear your suit. AC blows you up and down. And stand and read and talk stories from the scripture. You will be pleasantly surprised. But with the anointing. You will enter. And when you watch those impossibilities. And your heart is about to fail. Suddenly. Makosi parada here. The Holy Ghost begins to quicken his ability and tells you you are well able. Not by power, not by might. The anointing gives you confidence and audacity. That's why you can look at someone and say, I call you blessed. And suddenly, laws in the spirit begin to square up themselves at a decree of the anointing. The Bible talks about Elisha. That children were laughing at him and were calling him a bald headed man. He was severely bald headed from Bible history. And the children were laughing and the guy was angry. You know what he did? The Bible says he called out a bear from nowhere. Just called out a bear to eat them up. That was quite harsh. Don't do that if you're a man of God. Okay, don't get anointed and say, Now we have it. My roommate, you are in for it. Fire on your bed throughout this night. No, 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 come on. God empowers us with his spirit so that we can be ambassadors. And the Bible says faith works by love. So everything has to do with love. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? Quickly, I'm going to talk on the doorways to the anointing. Now we know what the anointing is and we understand the character of the anointing. The anointing is transferable. Your body can conduct the anointing. And some of the benefits of the anointing, very quickly... The doorways to the anointing. Look up. There are only two doorways to the anointing. Prayer and the word. Full stop. Every other thing is just stories. The word of God gives us clear, especially in the New Testament. There are two doorways to a lasting and a tangible anointing prayer and the word even if hands are laid on you even if your seed is sown you must activate it by the ministry of prayer and the word otherwise it will not work hallelujah are you following me you can't just so i'm telling you it has to be by prayer and the word the bible says you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you but in Acts chapter 2, we do not see them receiving power, but we see them receiving tongues. I thought God said they would receive power. Now the Holy Ghost came and we do not see any power, but we saw tongues. There is a direct relationship between praying in tongues and the release of spiritual power. Paul said, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than ye all. That was his secret. When John G. Lake was asked, what is the secret to your anointing? He said, praying in the spirit. They asked Smith Wigglesworth and they said, do you ever rest? He said, yes. He said, how? He said, Because the Bible says this is the rest and this is the refreshing. As you pray in the spirit, there is an energizing, an activity of the spirit. There is an overflow of the anointing. The power of prayer. Number two, the word of God. The word of God. Ezekiel chapter 2. Verse 1 and 2. There is a spirit that comes with the word. John 6, 63. The flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickened it. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit and they are life. The word of God. Supernatural word of God. We'll talk about that another time. Now, I quickly want to round up by talking about the price for the anointing. The price for the anointing. This meeting will not make sense until I tell us the price for the anointing. Because in many circles, when they teach the anointing, they just stop and say, rise up on your feet. No, sir, I will not deceive you. It doesn't happen like that. There is a price for the anointing. The word price, don't let it scare you. The word price here means just the constraint, the discipline, the prerequisites, the requirements for the anointing. The anointing doesn't just fall on anybody. 
It's not just because you worshipped, you know, the whole atmosphere. I'm talking about a real, tangible, lasting anointing. Hallelujah. The price, the requirement, the constraint, the discipline for the anointing. Number one, prayer. Praying in the spirit. If you see a man who is working in terrible levels of the anointing and you cannot account anything to his prayer life, whether small, in most cases, that man does not have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He has the anointing of something else. Hallelujah. The Bible vividly tells us that though Jesus was anointed, we see in many, many times when Jesus would go and sit under the anointing, praying, generating energy in his spirit. Praying in the spirit is a tremendous tool to bring you to the place of the anointing. It takes a while. So don't think you just mumble tongues for 20 minutes. Suddenly you step into realms of glory where you wave your leg and everybody just flies this way. No, sir. It takes a while. There are roadblocks that your praying in the spirit will have to take out of the way. As you begin to pray in the spirit, God exposes to you the roadblocks to the anointing. There's no time to talk about that. Bitterness, unforgiveness, selfishness. Now, these things sound casual, but the day the Lord opened my eyes in the spirit, I never shared this, I just wrote it. I saw like a heart was beating and there were veins. It was like a blood, a blood vessel, but it was very big. And I saw things like kidney stones, you know, just stones. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he told me the roadblock to the anointing. I said, what is it? He actually didn't use these words. He said, they are called sins of the spirit. When you sleep with a lady, it's obvious. Everybody say, ah, bad boy, Jare. But when you nurse bitterness, are you following me? It's a terrible thing because nobody sees it. It's a, it's a dramatic roadblock to the anointing. Bitterness, unforgiveness, malice, slander. All these things the Bible calls the sins of the spirit. And so there is tremendous power from the throne room. But only very little is dispensed. Because it is blocked by all of these things. That's why the Bible says, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Romans 12, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that don't easily beset us and let us run with perseverance. And when God showed me that, I said, Lord, search my heart. Take away every seed of bitterness, every seed of everything that is stopping me from entering new levels. In the anointing bitterness unforgiveness malice backbiting all of these things are the direct reasons let me tell you these are the things that are in the word of god it brings you it chokes you and there is very little that is dispensed and hear me friends no matter how you try to magnify the anointing the people know what really flows from you and so i made up my mind like david i said lord search my heart Women have tendencies. Such my heart. Prayer. Praying in the spirit. Number two. The impartation that comes through the word. The price for the anointing. You must be diligent in the word. Number one. To seek and to know the principles. And then number two. To abide by the principles. Make sure you write it. Many of us like going for the word. Go for the word. But above going for the word, you must do the word. Hallelujah. Your obedience to the word releases the anointing. Your obedience to the word releases the anointing. Your obedience to the word releases the anointing. Hallelujah. There are many, but I'll just give us this last one so we can pray. So number one, praying in the spirit. That's why you see that we take some time to pray every time the service starts. It's not just to prove to the community we can pray in tongues. And if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost here, it's critically important. We're making arrangements to have baptism classes at least twice every week. Not, not baptism in water, real Holy Ghost baptism. It's important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why Satan wrestles the subject of tongues and the Holy Spirit. He knows and he understands that therein lies the, a, a, a principle that will activate the anointing in your life. Hallelujah. Number three, Jeremiah 17. Mm. Jeremiah 17. 
Jeremiah 17, verse 9 and 10. If you are there, say amen. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the conscience even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. Look up. One of the prize for the anointing is that your heart must be right with God. The heart factor is a very important factor in working in the anointing. I stepped earlier than myself to talk about all of this bitterness, envy, anger, malice. These are the things that cause our hearts not to stand in a position of sincerity. And many times we desire things from God from a selfish reason. To prove points. We're talking um, 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 uh, in, a, in my house today with Pastor White and Manasseh. We're just talking about ministry and several things. And we were urging ourselves how that we need to be true at all times. Every time I go for my retreat, I tell the Lord, I say, Lord, search my heart. People can call me apostle, daddy, man of God. Don't let those things get to my head. I say, Lord, what is your true report about my heart? That's what I want to know. Because it takes God seeing. Many of us say, God, give me the anointing and see what I'll do. God says, I'm already seeing. I've seen that your heart is not right. Hallelujah. And we package all kinds of seeds, but the heart is desperately wicked. We are just saying, Lord, the day I can wave my hands at people like Pastor Chris, I will first go to the crew where the men of God are and prove to them that the grace upon my life is not a little one. And God says, I'm watching. It's amazing the motif that caused people to pray and fast and hunger for the anointing. The heart factor. The Bible says, I, God. So while you are praying, Marco Prata Shatabai, Lord, great realms, great realms. There is an activity of the spirit. There is a searching. You know how a computer begins to search for viruses. And God searches for those viruses and begins to bring them out. And says, look at roadblocks. See, sometimes when you pray in tongues, you end up feeling bad after the prayer. Not because God doesn't love you. He's bringing out all the roadblocks. Yeah. And he says, you've got to choose whether to continue praying till you conquer them. As you keep praying, you keep hearing your spirit, bitterness. And you try to pretend as if God is not talking. God says, well, you are hearing me, bitterness. <laughs> Anger. Lost. You're trusting God for the anointing. So that all the ladies will just loiter around you. And you stand, thou valued Man of God, I the Lord searches the heart. He said, I test the conscience. God tests your conscience. There are so many people that the day the anointing comes upon your life, you have no respect and regard for anyone again. Little anointing that comes suddenly, arrogance. And you know, in our quest for our new creation teachings, sometimes when you see the cry of David, you think he was expressing inadequacy. But when you rise from some levels to newer levels in the spirit, you know that it was maturity. He said, search my heart. Try my thoughts. If there is any evil way in me, it's true that you are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. But sometimes you need to be honest and say, Lord, try my heart. Whenever I go for retreat and I cry, and then the Lord begins to tell me, this area, this area, this area, check this. You are stubborn in this area. You are still not hearing what I say. Oh Lord, draw my ears back. Where is the area? And God says, Here. Say, men may be applauding you, but you know I say, God, yes, I confess. And then when you rise from that mountain, you come with a fresh dimension of grace. And when people think they have exhausted all they know about the anointing upon your life, suddenly they see a new dimension and ask, From whence come it thou? I'm teaching you practical secrets. That will, and if you get these things and live with them, you will walk in levels of the anointing that will surprise you. This third price is the hardest. It's easy to pray in the spirit. 
It's easy to see to the world, but it's difficult to allow the Lord to search your heart and remove these roadblocks. These roadblocks. You know why? Because sometimes the roadblocks come from legitimate things that men do. Are you following me? Sometimes these roadblocks come when people accuse you. They come when um, maybe your, your parental background growing up, your father was on an unfaithful man, did all kinds of things, you've been abused, and so there's bitterness. But when there is time, when it's time for the anointing, your roommate blackmailing things against you, saying things that are not correct. Are you following me? Your parents not understanding the things you are saying. In your workplace, people are speaking certain things. Number three is the hardest. And many people do not look at it, but it's the surest. If your heart is right before God, there is no reason why you will not touch levels of the anointing. Ancient secrets. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord 